Hello, welcome back to the Archeria Pigments 3 tutorial series. Today we're dealing with um, a pretty monstrous subject called granular synthesis. Although it seems more intimidating than it really is, we'll be able to pick it to pieces, I'm pretty confident. Just before we make a start on that, if you enjoy this video today and uh, want to support my channel, check out the Patreon link below, that's the best way you can do it. Uh, okay, so granular synthesis, what's it all about? Imagine you've got a sample. Uh, and we do have a sample, we're in the sample player. And you chop it up into tiny fragments of sound, anywhere between one millisecond and one second long. And then you have the ability to play many different instances of different points of that wave simultaneously. Then you have a granular synthesizer. These things were invented something like 80 years ago, completely theoretical, and the technology did not exist to do it. And quite frankly, as other forms of synthesis have become more popular, such as analog and frequency modulation, a lot of the stuff that we've seen in this synth today, granular synthesis has been kind of left behind because it does tend towards the more sound effecty kind of thing. You can get really quite abstract. The swarm of bees syndrome, I call it. You know, most roads on granular synthesis lead to swarm of bees. So what we've got here is we've got our regular grand piano um, sound and I've set it up so that the, the granular synth engine is going to generate the simplest possible interpretation of this sound. Every one second, that's determined by our frequency here in density, it's going to generate a new grain. Now when you think about grain, it's basically just a random playhead on this sample and it's going to exist for a period of time. It doesn't necessarily have to move forwards. It can play the sound backwards, and that's determined by our direction. At the moment, this knob is 100% forwards, and so all of the grains that we play are going to move forwards. The grain is going to last for this amount of time. So it's going to play for one second. So without any more explanation, I'm just going to press a key, and we'll listen to it for a few seconds, and then we'll come back and talk a bit more. Okay, that's as simple as granular synthesis gets. This isn't the sound that you're normally going to hear. I've just tried to break it down to the absolutely smallest components I possibly can. If we have a look at what's going on with the wave, this white line represents a grain. This is the playhead of the grain moving forwards in time. And you can see every second a new grain is being spawned. Now that doesn't mean that the old grains are being thrown away. For instance, if we increase the density to 2 Hz, it means that you're now going to be generating 2 grains a second, 2 independent playheads every second. Let's do that. So left click to get fairly close and then right click to get me absolutely spot on. What does that sound like? So each of those grains is still lasting for exactly one second. There are just now twice as many of them. And you can see that by increasing the frequency of the grain generation, the playheads are getting closer together. If I increase this to four hertz, now let's have a listen to that. And you can see the gaps between these playheads is remaining consistent. Let's start messing with that consistency a little bit. Let's say, don't generate uh, a new grain exactly every quarter of a second, put some randomization into it. And that's what we're doing here. We're randomizing the density of the grains. Now we can randomize in uh, an increasing manner. In other words, make the grains more dense or thin them out. And that's the, basically you're controlling the difference between the minimum and maximum ranges here. So now, when I stop, there's different gaps between the widths of these different playheads that are being generated at um, different intervals. So rather than approaching this from a purely mathematical perspective, all of that's really interesting. What's it starting to sound like? This is a piano. Sounds more like a string quartet. Let's give ourselves a little bit of extra release. You can see all the playheads being generated. The maximum number of grains that can possibly be generated 
is controlled by this number here. But of course, how long each one lasts and the frequency with which they're generated is all going to inform the, the algorithm behind the scenes. In addition, the number of notes that I play, each one of those notes is potentially generating multiple playheads. Now, something to bear in mind is that all of these playheads have to come from somewhere. They come from the computer's brain. This is an exceptionally challenging thing for the computer to do. It's very CPU intensive. And as I start increasing this frequency more and more, and we can go all the way up to 250 hertz, that's 250 times a second, this thing would be generating new grains. That's a hell of a burden on your CPU. Now, as I pulled that um, size time down, this is the length that each grain plays for. We're no longer in the domain of playing lots and lots of long samples and adding them all together and giving this kind of string effect. Now we're into the kind of territory that granular synthesis aficionados would be more familiar with, where you start getting a really almost kind of robotic feeling to the sound because now we're taking such tiny slices of sound that the original waveform starts becoming um, unrecognizable. In fact, if I increase the density to 250 hertz and make the size small enough, I'm basically generating a wave at 250 hertz. And there you can see in the tuner, we've lost all sense of the original um, tone at all. Let's have a look at some of the other stuff. What else can we do? Well, we can randomize the size. So now some of those grains are much shorter than others. And by randomizing both density and size, we're really starting to mess with any kind of order that we previously had. We can independently set where our start point is. So despite the fact that the wave begins at, uh, at point zero, we can say, well, set all of the playheads, the grain playheads at this arbitrary point in time. And then you can see everything goes um, to the right of the, the start point. Bear in mind as well, if we switch the direction to 100% backwards, it doesn't mean go behind the start point. It means start here, choose somewhere on the right hand side of the start line, but play the wave backwards. So all the playheads are moving backwards, but they never extend beyond this point. We can also randomize the individual pitch of each one of those um, playheads. So despite the fact that the underlying wave might have had an original pitch, that's long gone. You know, we're no longer interested in the fact that this piano was generating a note in the pitch of C because we've got all these tiny, tiny time slices. That's gone. Now we're setting the, the pitch of each one of those grains and we start getting this kind of effect. Swarm of bees. What I'm doing with this knob here is, is randomizing the start position. So now instead of all of the grains starting at position zero, I'm occasionally, and it's random, arbitrarily jumping forwards a period of time and choosing a different slice of the wave to play. Because my direction knob is set to more or less 12 o'clock, half of the grains are playing forwards and half of the grains are playing backwards. I hope you're keeping up. I'm not. <laughs> it's absolutely, it's, it's just an absolutely insane environment when you get to this point. We can randomize the pan. Now, when this many grains are playing, you do have a stereo effect and you can hear different stuff going on in different ears. If I went all the way back down to um, generating a grain every second and having the grain play for one second, you would hear them bouncing in different ears, but it would be random. This pan knob is random. The other option that we have on the stereotype is width, and this is like random plus. 
what it basically does is not only randomizes the pan, but also applies an arbitrary randomization to all of the other controls as well. So this is max chaos. And right at the very end, we can also randomize the volume at which each grain is played. If you pull these grains down to, so that they're very, very small, now each grain is what, 27 milliseconds long, you get a really kind of brutal staccato effect. And we can increase that sense of kind of dramatic violence by changing the shape of the, of the amplitude envelope for each grain. So what's going on in this middle image here is this is the envelope curve for each grain. Now in triangular mode, it's fairly smooth, you know, it's fairly well behaved. But as soon as we start having any kind of straight lines, like for instance with a square wave, then we're going to get brutal on and offs. And because so many grains are being generated, so many different individual playheads are being generated, and they're going to be jumping all over the place on this wave, it's going to start sounding like noise. We're going to start getting violent distortion. I um, jump over to this glockenspiel sample. I'm going to get us to a stage firstly that makes some kind of sense. Okay, I've set it up so that it sounds pretty much like a Geiger counter. Let's have a listen. Where all of the grains, you can see that they're, they're all concentrated at the start. I've pulled the, the start randomization down to zero. But a very long um, size, so each grain is almost two thirds of a second and they're not being generated very often, so we can really make sense of what's going on. But this, I think this is where it really benefits us to, to dive in there and start moving the controls and see what you can get. Because when you start messing with the, the start position, randomizing the start position, you get a much more interesting effect. But very low rates, it's like bell ringing. As we increase this, we're going to get a more dramatic effect. And now I want to start thinking about different wave shapes because I want to really hear those individual bells. Well, a bell has a very distinct um, envelope curve. It looks more like this. So let's pick something that's more sympathetic with a bell shape. Now we're in the alien laboratory. by randomizing the sizes. It's really great fun. It's definitely something to get stuck in there and see what sound effects you can come up with. You very rarely end up with a usable synthesizer in the traditional sense of the term, but why do you need one? If you've got analog and FM and sample based synthesizers, this is a different thing. This is fun.
and back to the alien chatter again. Let's try one more. Picked um, a more drone based kind of sound. You can see it's got a pretty thick and consistent waveform. Let's see what we can do with this. Lift off in T minus. We're getting a lot of that violence because of the straight line. If I switch to a wave shape that doesn't have a straight line, we lose it. Definitely an effect to get your hands dirty with. This isn't one to learn about in theory. You've got to you've got to twiddle with the knobs. And it's fabulous fun. That's granular synthesis. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next episode. Thanks a lot.